All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Um, we're doing class six in our advanced grammar class. Um, we are, let's see, we are, let's it's class six, seven, and eight will be next week. So we are almost done. We are one week away from being done, um, or a little more than a week, excuse me, uh, being done with our first um, court class in this course. So advanced grammar one was in May. Advanced grammar two will start in June. And then July, we will do advanced grammar three. Um, in June and July, there are a couple of days where the classes will be at different times, or you might notice that I'm teaching from a different location. We have some family kind of plans and, or, um, so you will still get access to the classes, but it'll just maybe look a little different versus me being in my office. So, um, okay. So let's see. To, we did this exercise in the intermediate grammar class. So if you've done this already, I did change it up just a little bit so that it isn't, you know, your second time doing the exact same exercise. But essentially, um, what I'd like to do today is, um, because we've been talking about the past tense, and past progressive, I'd like to do a little more repetition in memorizing some of these irregular verbs when we talk about them in the past tense. So we have the past tense, we've got the main base verb here, um, past tense, and then the past participle, which we use in a couple of situations, but mostly you're probably most familiar with the participle when we use the perfect tense. So I'm gonna write an example sentence over here because it helps me to um, make sure that I get the sentence correct. Cause I don't always know, oh, Ben is the past participle of B. I have to put it in a sentence in my brain to know what sounds right, okay? So for example, here, the participle for B is been. Um, okay, and so the example I have been a teacher um, for um, how many? I don't remember. Fifteen. Let's say fifteen years. Okay, I taught before that. Then, anyways, it's just a sentence. I have been. So that's the. You've got an auxiliary. This is your main verb participle, and then you've got this auxiliary here. We use this tense a lot. So um, next week we'll get into working with that tense more. And like I said, hopefully you have studied that in the past and this will just be like a refresher for you. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, yeah. So we'll do this exercise and then we've got a couple of things in the book that I'd like to go over with you. Um, and let's see, did we have any homework from the last time? I have to look at my notes. Um, I don't believe I did give you guys homework. Um, and then if you need that list of irregular verbs to study, I do recommend that. I mentioned this in the intermediate grammar class as well. You know, really taking some time to learn these is, one, it'll help you learn it. Two, it'll build your confidence so that when you're speaking, I mean, if somebody says the wrong past participle in English and they're a native speaker, which by the way, it happens a lot, um, it just sounds like like maybe they're uh, not very smart. <laughs> uh, and it's it, that sounds kind of mean, but realistically, um, proper sounding grammar really has, you have to have these pieces the past tense correct and the participle um, correct otherwise. And, and by the way, native speakers make these mistakes all the time. Um, drink, drink, drunk, those, that one for some reason, I, it, like, it never sounds correct in my mind. Like, is that the right way to say that? I don't know. Um, so, Anyways, you get the point. So actually, let's let's add that one on our list here. We'll do, we'll put that on here. Drink. Just because so many people make a mistake with that one, okay? Okay, if you want to pause for a minute and go ahead and see if you can fill in some of these blanks. So, for example, here we've got the, the verb is to be and the past tense is was or were. 
Okay, and then the participle is been. You can use this one for the past tense and work backwards to get your main verb here, and then use that to create the past participle. So take a minute if you'd like to go and do that. And I'm gonna pull up my sheet here, see if there are any other verbs that I think we absolutely have to go over. Okay, um, if you didn't take time to do this on your own and you're waiting for me, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully if you did this on your own, you've got everything correct. So your main verb for the past tense of did is do. The past participle here is done. Okay, so the past tense of is came. Um, we're gonna go come. And then what I need to do here is I kind of have to put it in here in this sentence to kind of see what makes sense. So I have come. I have come to the conclusion that um, English is a crazy language to learn. <laughs> okay. Um, the main verb is say. We've got the past tense. Said. Okay. Said. Notice the pronunciation there. And then the past tense. I have said this a million times. Okay. I have said. Okay. This it's in my way. Sorry, my phone is blowing up over here. I get so many messages from you guys. Um, okay, so the past tense here sat. The verb in the main form is sit. Okay, sit, sat. I have sat in the seat for many years. Okay, so it means it started in the past and I still today sit in the seat. So it's been something that continued from the past into the present and still happens today. Okay, so gotten, that's not very well written, G-O-T-T-E-N. Um, the present tense of that is get, and the past is got. I have gotten six, six, I, let's see, I have gotten sick six times this year. Okay, I have had in the past and in the past participle, I have had. I have had many opportunities to learn Italian. Okay, I have had, I have had, okay. Um, let's see, given is the participle. So let's go all the way to the beginning here. The tense is, or the main form is give, past tense. Yesterday I gave. And I have given, okay? The participle is seen. Let's go all the way here to see, okay? The past tense, saw, all right? Now we know the past tense here is new. So yesterday I knew, I knew it was going to rain, okay? Um, the t in the present tense is no. And over here we've got, I have, so putting it in here, known. I have known him for several years, okay? All right, our main verb is make. In the past tense, we make that change to made. Plug it in this sentence, I have made bread every day for 10, days. I have made. So it does not change from the past tense. I have made. Okay. So as you can see, as we move through this, there aren't many um, patterns here. So really it's about really just practicing um, and memorizing them. So what I mentioned in the intermediate class is maybe a good idea would be to print the list or, uh, and then, you know, when you have a lot of information, you know, one way to um, make it easier to learn is to like organize it. So maybe you take all of the ones where these don't change. Um, had, had, um, you know, made, made. Those ones don't change from the past tense to the participle. Maybe you can circle all of those on that list and then say, okay, Monday, I'm going to learn all of these. Okay, and then the next week, the ones that are kind of similar, 
um, you know, maybe only one letter changes and you organize the information. You know, you have to choose which is the best way for you to learn English or, or to learn anything, really. And what I also mentioned in the intermediate class is learning is a very personal experience. And so is teaching, by the way. So when I am, you know, creating a lesson or activities, um, it's based on the students that I know. Uh, and I know what people have struggled with in the past. Uh, but even better would be if you guys were to come to the live classes and then you can tell me, you know, this is what I have a problem with. This is what I struggle with. And then we make lessons based on those things and we get, we jump over those obstacles, right? Um, together. And, and I, you know, like I said, the teacher is the one who creates the space for the learning and organize, it takes, all the information and organizes it into, you know, bite-sized chunks, we say, you know, something you can eat, <laughs> something you can di digestible amounts of material. Um, and then, you know, you create the, the exercises to help you practice it. Um, but the bulk of the work or the majority of the work really is on the student to take what the teacher has given and I, if you don't like the way the teacher does it, you know, go find another way to look at it or look it up online and or in a book or a dictionary um, and find a way that suits your learning. You know, everybody learns differently. So so some people might not like my style of teaching and that's OK. Um, and so we just always have to be searching for what feels best, you know. All right, let's continue and wrap this up. So think is the verb here in the past tense. I thought yesterday, I thought I saw him at the party. And then in the participle, if you kind of plug it into the sentence, okay, we've got, I have thought that for many years. So we've got thought in the past tense and the participle. Uh, okay, so here we have the participle and we're gonna work backwards. So the verb is meant in the participle word, it's mean, okay? And then past tense, yesterday I meant, I meant to call you, but I never called you. I meant to call you, okay? So th that's, those are two other ones that really don't change from the past to the past participle. Um, drive in the present tense in the past is drove, okay? And then we've got driven. Hopefully this is so easy for you guys. So we've got understand. In the past I understood. And I have understood this for many years. Understood. Okay. Boom, boom. No, those not dry. Okay. So wonderful. I hope you guys did well on that. That one does not correlate. So we're going to erase that. Um, another good way to practice this would just be to create some sentences. Create some sentences where you maybe you write a sentence with this verb, change the sentence to the past tense, and then change the sentence to the past participle. So let's do a couple of those together here. Um, let's just do that. Okay. Let's see. Um, so if we start, let's say, say, I say, um, I say, good, what is it? How about this? I've got an idea. I say positive affirmations. Every, oops, every day, okay? Let's change this. So this is present, present tense. We'll put a little PT there. Next, we're gonna do past. So let's use something from this category. So here's our main verb, okay? We're gonna put that in the past tense. I said, 
positive. Okay. I said positive affirmations. I'm not going to use every day because that no longer makes sense. It's in the past tense. So I'm going to say something that references the past tense. So we're going to say yesterday. I said positive affirmations yesterday. And then let's put it using the past participle. Let's use the perfect tense, okay? I have said positive affirmations, okay, for two years, okay? So that's one example. So if I were you, I would maybe maybe choose five of these verbs and do this exercise. Start in the present tense. Remember to use something that indicates it's present tense. I like um, ice cream. Yesterday, I liked chocolate ice cream. <laughs> I have liked vanilla ice cream for many years. Uh, you know, silly example, but you, you get the point, okay? Let's see, let's continue on here now that we've gotten this. Um, my suggestion I said before was to have, take five words and to do three sentences with each word using one, two, and three, okay? Uh, I think that would be great practice. And then maybe that's your way of practicing these words over time is every day you do five and then in a month you've got most of them done, okay? Um, like I said, I mean, I think, you know, learning is always um, about A, being committed and being resilient with something and then executing your plan. So creating your plan, um, you know, maybe you tell yourself, I'm going to try this 20 minutes every day. I don't know if you've ever heard, um, what is that called? Um, I have to look it up, but essentially the guy says, if you study or do something or practice something 18 minutes a day, after I think it's 100 days, you'll be better than 95% of the world in that particular thing. So, you know, if you spend 18 minutes a day working on English after 100 days, you're, you are going to see improvement. And that's the type of dedication that any learning is. You know, if I say I want to be a master yoga teacher, I definitely need to practice, right? I need to learn the names of all of the moves. I need to learn the adjustments that the teacher should be making and watching for. I probably need to go study with some guru in India or something, uh, you know, to really learn the essence of the of of, it, of yoga. So um, making a plan um, is, is a really important piece. And another piece that I also think is if you are not very confident or you don't know for sure what the level you are at, meaning A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, if you're at a beginner, advanced, intermediate, or advanced, um, you know, many people do not know um, what level they are at. So, um, you know, just like anything, if you pull up a map on your phone, what's the first question that the map is going to ask you? It's not, where are you going? It's, where are you now? Right. So if you say, well, I want to I want to be a fluent. I want to be fluent in English. I want to feel super comfortable and I never want to have anybody say I don't understand. Well, that's a, it's a great goal. It's a great destination, but you need to know where you are. And then once you know where you are and you know your destination, then you make the map to get there. Right. So. It, you know, there are lots of online classes or excuse me, online tests. Um, there is one linked, I believe, on our homepage. If not, you know, message me and I can send you that link. But there are free versions, you know, that will help you kind of establish where you're at. And I when I teach students live, um, it's that's where we start. You know, I, I, I cannot walk into a classroom with 30 students and just start teaching, I need to know, what do you know? You know, are you an advanced student? Have you studied past perfect, present per? You know, I don't know. And I can do little interviews with students, but realistically it's a test, you know, to find out where they are at. Does that make sense? So 
I know I have lots of little side speeches for you guys, especially today. I'm feeling very inspired, but you know, um, I've spent a lot of years um, teaching and thinking about teaching and how to be a better teacher and how to work better with my students and how to help my students achieve their goals. And uh, this is not to say that I know everything, um, but I, I do, I feel like I have witnessed a lot of, um, I feel like I have witnessed a lot of learning and, and watched the process of learning over the years. So I feel really grateful for that. Um, okay. I'll stop talking. <laughs> Let's come over here to the desk and get some exercises done for you guys. So we're going to decide with these if it's simple past or past progressive. Okay. We're just going to move kind of quickly because I kind of expect that if you guys want to stop and do this on your own, I would pause the video right now. All right, let's look at the answers now. So we've got three conversations. Guess what? I was seeing or I saw Andre Agassi and Steffi Graf at the Club Rio last night. So they circled saw already because it's a one time thing. Really? They're such a great couple. I want you guys to also be paying attention to my intonation and which words I'm stressing, okay? Really? They're such a great couple. What were, what did they do doing there? What did they do there or what were they doing there? What were they doing there? Because they were there for a period of time. So we're going to say, what were they doing there? They were dancing. They danced near us on the dance floor. So they were dancing. Okay. Wow. Did you get their autograph? So this, you know, this when you're saying we're dancing or they dance near, it kind of doesn't, both kind of have the same meaning because it happened and ended in the past. So I think this feels a little bit more correct to me because they started dancing and they danced for a while. Okay. But realistically, you could say they danced near us on the dance floor. They were dancing near us on the dance floor. Wow, were or did you get, get, getting or get their autographs? Did you get, did you get their autographs? Yes, and then Graf gave me her pen. So it was a one-time thing, um, was giving. Doesn't sound right, does it? Awesome. Were you bringing it with you or did you bring it with you? Did you bring it with you? I want to see it. No, it was falling or it fell out of my pocket when someone was bumping. No, a bump is a one-time thing. Bumped into me. I never was finding, mm -mm, found it. Okay, so sometimes things just don't sound right. And I hope that that's what you can develop is kind of this general feeling like, mm, that's just not right. It doesn't sound right. I mean, that's what a native speaker has, right? Okay. Um, sorry, my phone is buzzing. I put that away. Um, okay. Taro says, what did you do or what were you doing when you sprained your ankle? So here's where we have those two that kind of connect together. What were you doing when you one time thing sprained your ankle? So remember that those pictures, right? Where you've got something that started in the past and then continued for a while and ended. This is what we call the progressive. So it happened or con present past continuous. Continuous is a nice word too, because it has the implication that it continues over time. So what happened while or when something happened one time? Okay. What were you doing when you sprained your wrist? Okay. I was, I, Playing, I was playing. So was is not a choice. So we know that it's gotta be playing. I was playing tennis with my boyfriend. We were pretending to be Agassi and Graf. I hurt myself one time while I, I was, I hurt myself one time while I hit the ball. Okay. Or was hitting, I think was hitting. Okay. Okay. Sounds like he's a pretty tough opponent. I hope you recover soon. Okay. All right. Jason and Aaron's conversation. Are you okay, Aaron? Were you crying or did you cry? Were you crying? Were you crying? Because you don't just cry for one time. You kind of cry for a period of time. 
were you crying? Yes, but where were you knowing? Did you know? But how, oh, excuse me. How did you know? How did you know? I wasn't crying, didn't cry when you were coming and came in. Sorry, it's, I have to read both of them, but it's kind of makes it a little confusing. I wasn't crying when you came in. So here's the timeline. She started crying. She ended crying. And maybe he came in here. Came in, she was crying. Okay? So she started crying, she ended crying, and then he came in, but all of it happened in the past, all right? Your eyes are red, so that's how he knew. Um, the movie Frida was on TV. It's about the Mexican painter, Frida Kahlo. Were you ever seeing, did you ever see it? It's so sad. Were you ever seeing, we don't say that. Did you ever see it? Okay, so see is one of those non-action or state of verbs. Um, while I was watching, watched it, I was thinking, thought about her life. While I was watching it, I thought about her life. She had so many physical problems and she never really recovered from them. Okay. We can use recovering in the past, but in this case, it's, it's the sentence is discussing a one-time specific event. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. I, I'm going to have this one be your homework, but let's do this one together. Okay. So here we have, I've got to kind of make it like this. So we're going to have two sheets of paper. Okay. Does that makes sense guys. So we've got a timeline at the top. It says this timeline Show some important events in Monique's life. Use the timeline and the cues on the page to write sentences about her. Okay, so down here it gives us some cues. We've got our timeline here. So we're going to make sentences. Use the timeline and the cues on the page to write sentences about her use, when or while, and the simple past or past progressive. There is more than one way to write some of these sentences. So this will be a great activity. So you can see in the timeline it starts in 1978 when she was born in Canada and then becomes book becomes a success and quits the job in 2010. So we're talking about this woman Monique, okay? So in number 1 it says moves to Australia meets Paul. Okay? So the sentence could be let's see where does she she moves to Australia and meets Paul. She met Paul when she moved to Australia. Okay? So that's great. So she met Paul here. She moved to Australia first and then met Paul. Gets married, studies medicine. She got married while she was studying medicine. So starts medical school, gets medical degree. So this whole time she's studying medicine, okay? So, and then in the middle, she got married. Okay, let's continue. So lives in Australia. So she moves to Australia here and then gets married. So if we combine those two, um, we can say there's a lot of different, she was living in Australia when she was the past tense for get, got married. Perfect. All right. There are other ways you could say that. Let's see. What else could we say? She was living. She was living. No, we said that. Um, you could say while living in Australia, she got married. Um, so you can kind of have a couple different ways. Um, let's see. So has medical degree. She gets her degree here and then gets her first job. She got her first job when she, or maybe you could say after, after she got her degree. It's hard to write all of that in one sentence. Um, practices medicine. Why? Okay. Practices medicine at Lenox hospital. She starts out here, has a son. 
she had a son while practicing medicine at, sorry, Lennox Hospital. Can you guys see that? Okay. Um, writes a book, works at Lennox Hospital. So, so she finishes her book here and she's still working there. So she, she wrote a book while she was um, working at the hospital. I would like to do this on the board. So I will do this on the board in our next class. Um, let's skip this one because I don't have any space. Um, actually, let's just do seven down here. How about that? Seven. Um, so she does a TV interview and finishes her book. Uh, let's see. So she finishes the book. You could say when she finished her book, she did a TV interview because those things kind of we're going to keep those both in the single past or the simple past tense because they kind of just were one time things. So we're not talking about a period of time. It was she finished the book and then she did a TV interview. OK. Um, OK. So those things are both the same thing. Um, and I mean, on the same little line here. So let's see if we can. So she. Let's see how this. Um, her book became a success. So she left her job. Okay, great work. Um, I'm going to write those on the board for next time and we'll review these together again. What I would like for you guys to do for homework is this activity. So it's kind of like the one we just did together. But basically you are um, using the correct form of the verb in the parentheses that's below. So what were you looking at just then? You smiled. Okay. Um, and so you're going to look at the bottom verb here and then decide if it's symbol past and past or past progressive. Okay. Um, so let's see. I watched the video of Nicole's wedding. She looked so happy. Okay. How did she and Matt meet? I'm giving you those. Okay. You guys finish the rest. Okay. So there's, you're starting here with Eva and you're going all the way down here to Lara. All right, you guys have a great day. We'll finish the rest of this in our classes next week. That's our last week um, of classes. So Okay, everybody, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in class next week. Bye.